The low-fat versus low-carb debate is ferociously fought. This is easily the biggest argument in nutrition, second only to whether pineapple belongs on pizza. And this battle has one new piece of the jigsaw to add to the puzzle. A recent study in pre-print format compared an animal-based ketogenic diet to a plant-based low-fat diet. Some hardcore keto fans will believe that higher carbohydrate intakes will raise insulin, raise hunger, and promote fat storage i.e. the carbohydrate insulin model. And some hardcore low-fat fans will believe that as fat has a higher calorie density, it is easier to overconsume. To test these head-to-head, -head, an inpatient trial was designed where an animal-based ketogenic diet with 10% of their calories coming from carbohydrates was put against a plant-based low-fat diet with 10% of their calories coming from fat. Inpatient trials are short. Just this 14-day period on each diet meant that subjects lived in a research lab for one month to complete the crossover design. 14 days one, 14 days the other. Now the flip side to this is these shorter term trials can be extra meticulous. Food can be administered to subjects and precisely controlled for calorie and macronutrient content. Compare this to longer term trials where you have to trust what subjects tell you they've eaten. Notoriously unreliable. Now importantly, this trial was looking at ad libitum food intake. This is not designed to measure body composition changes with two diets of the same calorie content. It is designed to see how much people eat when left to their own devices and the subsequent impact from that. So what were the results? The animal-based ketogenic diet showed benefit for lowering blood glucose and insulin. The low-fat plant-based diet resulted in a lower ad libitum food intake of 689 calories per day. Unsurprisingly to almost anyone who reads research papers, this lower calorie intake did result in greater body fat losses per day. Although obviously, over just a 14 day period, these differences are very small to detect. Also unsurprisingly, the ketogenic diet did result in faster initial weight loss, which is very common in reduced carbohydrate diets. As body fat losses weren't greater, this primarily came from fat-free mass, which includes water, glycogen, and gastrointestinal contents. This reiterates why looking at body weight change alone can be misleading leading for people who care about fat mass changes. Naturally, the conclusion that the ketogenic diet did not result in greater body fat losses has created some criticism from people who feel like their sacred cow is being murdered. Pardon the animal-based pun. Yeah, but the trial wasn't long enough. Well, it was a short-term trial that was meticulously controlled. It isn't designed to tell people what's going to happen if they followed the diet for two years. But the thing that's interesting about this is people always use that as an excuse for maybe the results would turn in their favour. If you're being intellectually honest, you also have to accept that maybe they would go the opposite direction. People only eat less on plant-based diets because the food tastes worse. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Well, subjects in this study rated pleasantness and there were no significant differences. Honestly, I don't think any rational low carb fans need to get their underwear bunched up over this trial because I don't find any of the conclusions so groundbreaking that they rock my worldview. One of the things I did find interesting is that when looking at the individual data, it seemed like everyone ate less on the plant-based diet. I expected it to be more mixed with some people eating less on the ketogenic diet. But before people take that conclusion and run with it, I do think there are some caveats. In my opinion, it isn't sensible to overgeneralize things like diet, pleasantness, appetite, and ad libitum food intake. How pleasant and satiating a diet is doesn't boil down to macronutrient breakdown alone. But there are some conclusions that I think are safe to take away. Changes in insulin levels don't have to correlate with changes in body fat. Ketogenic diets are not always going to be superior for appetite regulation, especially when compared to a low-fat plant-based diet which is higher in fiber, which it was in this study. You know what would be super? If people stopped pretending that their sacred macronutrient distribution was best for fat loss and instead started promoting individual adherence.